Hello my dear friends, my name is Julia and Jord and you are watching my channel dedicated to the history and mysteries of our world. Did you know that the practice of concubinage in China dates back thousands of years and was once the norm among the elite? According to historical data published in the popular historical magazine Ancient Origins, most Chinese emperors had a significant number of concubines on average from 6 to 10,000 who lived with them in the forbidden city all their lives and who were forbidden to ever leave it. Why did the emperors need such a huge number of concubines? How were they selected? How did they live and what happened to them years later or after the death of the emperor? And also, what led to the mass murder of concubines during the Ming dynasty? Don't forget to subscribe, like and write what do you think about this. In ancient China, after ascending the throne, the emperor had to quickly complete one of his most important tasks to acquire a male heir in order to ensure the continuation of his dynasty. That is why a huge female harem was created for this purpose, in which a clear hierarchy between women was established. In this regard, according to custom, the royal family had to travel all over China in search of suitable spouses to replenish the imperial harem. The selection of the Xiongnu literally beautiful girls was a meticulous process in which young unmarried women competed to get one step closer to the emperor. They were subjected to numerous medical examinations as well as a series of behavioral and cognitive tests. Those who managed to survive this harsh process and stand out from the crowd got the opportunity to serve the emperor as his concubine once in a lifetime. After choosing a concubine, they obeyed a strict hierarchical system and fought for the emperor's attention all their lives. It is said that a similar process of choosing the most suitable spouses for the emperor existed back in the Jin dynasty from 265 to 420. The official wife of the emperor empress had primacy over concubines. Then, the dominant positions passed to the elder wives and favorite concubines of the emperor, who had quite a high influence and could well compete with the empress herself for the right of their sons to claim the throne. By the way, there was such precedence in history when the famous empress of the Han era, Wang Jinjun, had to fight with the beloved concubines of Emperor Fu and Feng Yuan to make her son the first heir to the throne. Since both women had great influence on the entire court and on the emperor himself, the firstborn of the empress was usually considered the main heir to the throne. But if the empress did not have a son, the heir was chosen from among the sons of the emperor's closest senior wives or concubines, who were then ranked according to their class position in the hierarchy and the personal attitude of the emperor. Approximately 100 to 300 eligible girls took part in the initial appearance and behavior check. From this group, those who were deemed suitable were registered as Gyeong in order to undergo a more rigorous selection process. Finally, those who completely managed to pass all the tests passed the final selection in the Palace of Heavenly Purity, where the Emperor and Empress themselves made their choice. Usually the selected candidates stand out for their beauty, health, talents and most importantly, family heritage. On average, the Chinese Emperor had up to 10,000 concubines in the Forbidden City. Think about it for a minute, if the Emperor summoned a new concubine every day, it would take him more than 25 years to communicate with each of them. The BBC magazine reported in one of its articles that officials even drew up a special schedule for the emperor, so that every evening he could devote himself to as many ladies as possible. Anyway, most of his concubines didn't know the emperor at all and had never seen him in person, but that didn't mean they were free to do other things. They mostly had to sit and wait for their turn, even if that turn never came and these women literally had to sit. In the Forbidden City, because many imperial concubines could not walk, because their legs were so grotesquely deformed due to the popular practice of foot bandaging, that when the emperor wanted one of them, guards or eunuchs had to carry the women to his chambers. All the other concubines who escaped the fate of bandaging their feet were engaged in daily household chores, carried out the main tasks of the emperor's wife, or a more influential concubine, served the emperor, etc. In ancient China, it was dangerous to be beautiful. According to Precious Media magazine, beautiful Chinese women were often abducted from their families to serve as concubines in the emperor's forbidden city, and sometimes even the families themselves offered their daughters to the authorities in exchange for a political favor, an important post or a large sum of money. 
Perhaps the families deceived themselves into believing that life in the palace would be better for their daughters than at home. The selection of these women was also quite serious. No one was taken there. Several thousand women were examined at the same time. The most attractive of them were selected. Then officials carefully examined their hair and skin, and if any diseases were found in them, they were immediately eliminated. On average, when the eunuchs examined 6,000 girls, only 200 of them became concubines. Therefore, we can be sure that these women were from respectable families, beautiful and had no health problems. So if anything, their sons could become the next emperors of China. The emperor's concubines lived in isolation from the outside world. They were not even allowed to see a doctor if they fell ill. Instead, they were diagnosed and treated by special doctors who worked at the imperial court. If any guard, official or civil servant touched a concubine, he was threatened with the death penalty. Although many of these concubines, after one visit to the emperor, actively tried to win over a large number of men who were in the forbidden city in order to get pregnant faster and gain influence over the emperor. Usually women did not care that the child might not be from the emperor. DNA tests did not exist. Then it was important to prove to the emperor as soon as possible that he would have an heir from this concubine. By the way, concubines were not allowed to raise children and live with them in the same place. If a daughter was born, she was usually married off to some influential official or foreign ruler in the case of Princess Wenchen to strengthen alliances. Most princesses throughout history have been educated and trained in many feminine pursuits, such as writing poetry or playing go. However, the honor of dying with the emperor fell only to beloved concubines, which means that it was one of the few professions in history where promotion officially took place depending on the position held. They were even buried in tombs next to the emperor and his wife. Ordinary, unloved or untouched concubines could retire after several years of service or after the death of the emperor and then make a successful career as a laundress or become a nun in a convent, which was actually the only way out for them. But of course, it also happened that former concubines skillfully made their way to the throne and became the sole rulers of the entire celestial empire, as happened with the legendary Wu Zichen, a former concubine who became empress and ruled for 40 years. Known as one of the four ancient beauties of China, Yang Yuhuan, better known by her title imperial consort, Yang or Yang Guifei, was a favorite of Emperor Tang Xuanzang. The love story of the emperor and Yang Guifei is often described as the beginning of the end of his empire. Besides neglecting his official duties in order to spend time with her, the emperor's favor also expanded Yang's influence, which subsequently led to serious political complications. It was said that the emperor fell in love with Yang after he saw her coming out of the hot springs with wet and flushed cheeks. The emperor then annulled Yang's first marriage to his son Li Mao, in order to make her his consort. No matter how dubious the emperor's actions and intentions were, in 745, his harem officially accepted a 26-year-old beauty, marking the beginning of a dramatic story of decline, power, and tragedy. But there is also a black page in the history of China, for example, the mass murder of concubines during the Ming Dynasty in China from 1368 to 1644. The Ming Dynasty ruled, which remained in power for 276 years. Historical documents describe this time as one of the greatest epochs of orderly government and social stability in the history of mankind. The Ming Empire was a global superpower that made sea voyages even before Christopher Columbus. The Chinese of that time began to produce books even before the invention of the printing press in Europe. The emperors of the Ming Dynasty were praised for their stability and progressive views, but this dynasty had a dark and terrible side. Their cruelty knew no bounds. Chinese emperors were especially cruel to their concubines. Some representatives of the mines had more than 9,000 of them. Some of the girls were abducted from their homes. Others were sold by their own parents. Concubines were forbidden to leave the forbidden city. They were in the golden prison all the time, visiting only the emperor's bed. In China, the practice of tying up the legs was widespread. In this form, concubines could neither escape nor even enter the emperor's bedroom on their own. They were brought in. They're naked by specially hired eunuchs. The founder of the Ming dynasty is considered to be the Hongwu emperor. He was the most important and influential of all Chinese emperors. 
In 1368, under his leadership, the army expelled the Mongol invaders from China, who had ruled the country for a century. Min himself came from a very poor family. In his youth, he wandered around China penniless, but he managed to become one of the most powerful generals in Asia. After founding his dynasty, he adopted the name Ming, which means resplendent. Outside the walls of the palace, he kept a large number of concubines, subjecting them to torture. His brutality went beyond military battles. Vanity and jealousy forced him to control every aspect of the captive women's lives. But control over them did not cease even after the death of the emperor. Hongwu initiated a tradition according to which concubines were killed or forced to commit suicide. Imperial women were also buried next to the ruler's body, burying them alive in the ground. The Yongle, Hongxi and other emperors who followed him continued this barbaric, cruel tradition. It was only in 1464 that Emperor Zitong abolished this terrible practice. The concubines could only be afraid of losing their master's favor, not of losing their lives. The emperor of the Ming dynasty, Yongle, became the founder of the new capital of China. Beijing, the city still bears this name. There he built the forbidden city, the Imperial Palace in Beijing. This palace existed from 1420 to 1912. The Yongle Emperor carried out a number of military, economic and educational reforms, reinforcing them with a dictatorial style of government. All of his cruelties are reflected in numerous documents. In 1421, the forbidden city was completely closed to outsiders. After that, rumors began to spread that one of Yongle's most beloved concubines committed suicide because of an affair with a palace eunuch since the emperor was impotent. Yongle did not ignore such gossip. Instructions were given to poison this concubine. Yongle then gathered all his 2,800 concubines and ordered the eunuchs to execute them all without exception. The women were stabbed and their bellies were ripped open. Even the concubine girls, who were barely 12 years old, were executed. There is nothing in the official reports about this massacre, but there is still some reliable information about the massacre in the Forbidden City. These events were described by concubine Kui, who was absent from the palace at the time. However, she did not manage to escape the massacre, either she and 15 other survivors of the massacre of concubines, according to the will of the Yongle Emperor, were hanged on white silk ropes right in the luxurious halls of the Forbidden City on the day of his funeral. The tenth ruler of the Ming Dynasty was Zhengde. He ascended the throne in 1505. This emperor was tired of his concubines, so he secretly visited local brothels at night. But that didn't stop him from assembling a huge harem. According to some historical documents, many of his concubines died of exhaustion. As there was not enough food for everyone, they also had nowhere to stay. According to most historians, it was the Zhengde Emperor who, with his style of government, led to the fall of the Ming Dynasty. After him, Jiajing became the Emperor of China. This ruler was obsessed with the idea of finding an elixir with which he wanted to live forever. According to Jiajing, the most important ingredient of this drug was the menstrual blood of innocent girls. On his orders, thousands of virgins aged 12 and over were gathered in the Forbidden City from all over China. To make the medicine clean and effective, the girls were fed only mulberry berries and rainwater. Because of this diet, many young concubines starved to death. In 1542, unable to withstand the bullying, 16 concubines tried to kill Jiajing. This attempt on the emperor's life is known as the Renin Conspiracy. The assassination attempt took place in the chambers of Emperor Duan's beloved concubine. After the orgy began, Duan left the room with her entourage. Concubines took advantage of this, they tried to strangle him, but failed. One of the attackers reported this to the empress. In response, the emperor's wife ordered the execution of the concubines, inflicting 1,000 cuts on them. Women died a slow death from blood loss. All the relatives of the concubines were also executed. The Empress did not spare her rival Duan, either executing her along with everyone else. Only the only emperor of the Ming Dynasty did not engage in such debauchery. He was the ninth emperor of the Ming Dynasty, Hongzhi. He led a life without numerous concubines, unlike his father, Emperor Shenghua, who was obsessed with perverted sex.
Hong Chu's mother was killed by her father's jealous concubine, Wang. She often killed pregnant concubines so that they would not give birth to an heir. There are no documents that speak of the cruelty of the Hanchu. Some wives even begged their husbands to have a concubine, since they themselves could not give birth to a son. As already mentioned, not only the emperors had harems. Already in ancient China, sororat was often practiced among the highest nobility when a younger sister or niece went to her husband's house with a bride as a kind of substitute wife concubine. In general, the position of a woman in the harem of an influential Chinese aristocrat was not as humiliating as, say, in the harem of the Turkish Sultan. And women from the ruling house had significant political influence and sometimes actively interfered in the affairs of the state or the lot, not to mention intrigues, which were often also of a political nature. Please write in the comments, how do you like my voice acting and narration? If you liked everything, I will continue to delight you with interesting historical videos. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share the video. See you soon.